Hello, everyone. So I hope you still have a bit of energy for me because I have a question for you. Is this an anomaly? Yes? No? Maybe? So before we answer this, it's important to put this back in context. It's 2017, and we started to work on a watchdog, an AI engine, which would proactively detect anomalies without asking for users for any setup. And a big requirement we had was to protect against false positives, because there is nothing we hate more than being woken up in the middle of the night for nothing. So if we look back at the example with this in mind, the correct answer, and I heard it, is it depends. The first thing we can do is to look at the mathematical definition of an anomaly. We look at the history, we compute a baseline, we calculate the standard deviation and check if the current values are within that baseline. Now, let's imagine if we zoom out from this graph and we look at a longer time frame and it looks like this. Then, it's, n it's mathematically not an anomaly, it's just a regular spike happening frequently. But what if the historical data was flat and we then had this spike? It would mathematically be an anomaly but would you actually care? And that's the most critical question we had to answer when we developed the first version of Watchdog Alerts, because we had thousands of mathematically valid anomalies every single day. So there was something more to take into account here. And so if we go back to our example, let's imagine it's CPU. Would you wake someone up for this? Probably not, right? It goes from 10 to 30%, so for CPU, that's usually fine. You only start caring when it goes really up, like 80 or 90%. And moreover, it only lasted 10 minutes. So CPU going slightly up for 10 minutes is likely not something we would care about. Now note that we know here it only lasted 10 minutes because we're looking at it after the fact. It's not something you can predict while it's happening, right? But what if it's an error rate for a critical service? then it's a different story, and you would likely start to care. So the first lesson we learned is that we care differently depending on the data we look at. And therefore, it's not just about mathematics and models anymore. It's about knowing what the underlying data represents and adjusting the protections you put in place based on this. Is the change big enough or reaching a high enough value for us to care? For CPU type of data, we would likely add a lot of protections, making sure we reach high thresholds, while for error rates, we will likely be much more tolerant. And it's the same for how long the anomalies last. We would likely adjust the confidence interval based on what we're looking at. And in an ideal world, it would actually be a combination of both. If the change is large, we would accept a short, shorter time frame before we start notifying people. But for a smaller change, we would likely like, uh, wait a longer time before we start raising it. OK. Now that we've established the desired behavior, how do you train such a model? And historically, in Datadog, we've always done it in two steps. We start by using our own data to build a golden data set. We indeed internally have a lot of very different systems with very different requirements. So it's a very uh, diverse source of data to be able to train a model on. So with that data set, we train the first model, and we look at the results. We then add a layer of protection based on our domain expertise and see how it goes. We iterate on this internally, and once we're confident enough with the results, we start partnering with a selection of customers to see if our assumptions work for them as well. Once you get that working, you likely have some things you can roll out more widely, and then you just uh, you can start measuring performance of your model to make sure everything works well. And that was the first version of Watchdog Alerts. But then we ask ourselves, can we go even further than this? Because if we look back to our example, it would have happened as follows. The anomaly starts. Let's say we detect it right away. You then wait for the context protection to kick in. Let's say it's an error rate. You still want to wait a few minutes to make sure it's not just a short blip. And so once you've reached that confidence interval, you start notifying on it. Now, with this data, 
can we start predicting before point two that it's actually going to behave that way? Can we start raising this sooner while making sure we're not adding false positives? Because let's remember, it's the number one requirement. And for this, we are currently testing a new supervised model approach, and let's see how that works in more details. You start with a very simple trigger on close to real time, looking at the last few minutes of data. You then wait long enough, potentially hours, to have enough data and to see how it evolves, to then apply our previous logic with confidence so we can establish if it's actually a worthy anomaly or an unworthy one. You then teach the model about the outcome so you can start predicting with the very early data what is a worthy anomaly and what is not. You then start triggering the model from the, the simple triggers and you keep that training loop to make sure that quality doesn't degrade. And this approach is actually extremely useful when you lack label data and that your model is heavily dependent on the context on an ever-changing environment. And in our case, success will be measured uh, thanks to precision as we allow ourselves to miss a few anomalies as long as we quickly report true positives that users can rely on. And hopefully, we will be able to detect such an anomaly much quicker than before without degrading quality. Now, with everything that we've talked about, I wanted to give you one small exercise. Because the example I used was simple. It's a simple increase, it stays up and then goes down. Now, what about this one? Is it an anomaly? Multiple anomalies? And why? So while I let you think about it, I wanted to use that time to remind everyone to never assume that things are simple or that a model will figure out everything by itself. Every AI feature is a mix of mathematics, good training data, and domain expertise. And even something that might look as simple as detecting anomalies might be much more complex than what it seems. And if anomaly detection was among the first things that Datadog looked into, it did not stop there. We kept investing on getting more insights from the data and providing more value to users, whatever the technologies or systems were behind. And I wanted to leave you with one final thought as you start building AI into your own companies. Data scientists are not magicians. They do heavily need your domain expertise and knowledge to build quality features. Also, don't try to mimic human behavior too much. If you were to build an automated vacuum cleaner, you would probably not build a humanoid robot patting the vacuum, right? So always think about the best way to solve a problem, no matter what is the model or technology behind. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>